Should the darling of the National Football League, a player that we love in C.J. Stroud, actually be a player to avoid? <laughs> Bloom, you're up, buddy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> avoid C.J. Stroud. Avoid. Abort. Uh, uh, because he's just going too high in fantasy drafts. Uh, could C.J. Stroud hit? I mean, look, usually there's at least one case where a player can hit. So, you know, I'm not going to say it's impossible that CJ Stroud will be worth the fifth round pick that he costs. But here's the problem. He doesn't add enough as a runner. He just doesn't add enough as a runner. Now you can say, well, what about Patrick Mahomes? Well, Patrick Mahomes has given us quarterback one finishes and Patrick Mahomes still adds a little bit as a runner, but Patrick Mahomes has shown us that already. CJ Stroud hasn't. Yeah. You add Stefan Diggs. Yeah, this could be an even more pass-heavy offense, but you're drafting C.J. Stroud closer to his ceiling than his floor. And the other part of this picture here is what players are you passing on? And I don't mean passing on in the sense that, you know, Anthony Richardson's going in the same round as C.J. Stroud. And Anthony Richardson could be a colossal bust if he can't stay healthy. But unlike C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson could be the quarterback one. He could be the number one quarterback in fantasy football. I don't think Stroud has that in his range of outcomes uh, because he doesn't add enough as a runner. But it's not just that, Cease. You're, now you're not going to take Dak Prescott in the 6th, 7th, 8th round. Now you're yep. not going to take Jordan Love in the 7th, 8th, ninth round. Now you're not going to take Kyler Murray in the 7th, 8th, ninth round. The reality is that those three quarterbacks have a similar enough scoring range of outcomes to C.J. Stroud that – you're losing unless there's just nobody you like on the board in the fifth round you're losing opportunities to take good fantasy quarterbacks later when you take cj stroud so stroud can't hit his ceiling he's being drafted stroud can't, stroud can't hit the ceiling that other players in his range can hit at quarterback and there are quarterbacks going right after him that have similar ceilings yeah similar ceilings for much cheaper prices and we work for the guy mr joe bryant and uh yeah value-based drafting yeah that's his baby man like value-based drafting yeah it is about value cj stroud is amazing and we do love him and we're excited about him okay why do they need to run when they can just hand off the ball to joe mixon why do they need to why does he need to run if right. he's got a collection of wide receivers and tight ends that he can just distribute the ball to you know that right. same urgency isn't there uh, that there are with other teams where the quarterback's like, okay, I'm going to look for this guy. If he's not open, I might take off and run. And you know, or have that propensity like Richardson does. And adding in Daniil Hunter and the second year in D'Amico Ryan's defense, right? Th th maybe this team isn't going to have as many shootouts. And, you know, They aren't going to need C.J. Stroud to throw four or five touchdowns to win. That's right. another thing that could, if they become a winning team, nobody expected them to be a winning team last year. If they become a winning team, that's going to hurt Stroud's numbers. Yeah, it's going to hurt Stroud's numbers, and Dallas is still has Dak Prescott. I'm going to throw for 5,000 yards. And no so. running backs, yeah. Yes, yeah, I think that's the way it goes. Speaking of running backs, this one is, I don't know, you probably expected it from a couple of Steelers fans, but Najee Harris, player to avoid. Yeah, because he's not the best back on his team. And the Steelers are showing us that, right? The Steelers basically admitted that when they did not pick up his option. Again, let this sink in. Najee Harris would have cost $7 million next year if the Steelers picked up his option. Starting running back money, okay. You know, DeAndre Swift per year kind of money, right? Maybe uh, Devin Singletary was a little lower than that. Whatever. Six, seven million dollars is for a replacement level starting running back. And what I mean by that is a, a, a running back that is good enough to be a starter, but not necessarily your entrenched long-term starter. You know, it's not Christian McCaffrey. Okay. It, the Steelers said, no, he's not a replaceable level starter. He's so they don't even see him in the prime years of his career as being worth that low end with the cap going up. They're telling us what they think of him. They see him as a more of a role player than a starter who steps up into that bigger role it has to be Jalen Warren how is Jalen Warren going after Najee Harris in fantasy drafts when the Pittsburgh Steelers are showing us that they prefer Jalen Warren the other thing is Jalen Warren 
new offense. I get it. Coach speak off season. A lot of it doesn't come to fruition, but when it's a new offense and a new offensive coordinator, play designer, offensive scheme, designer, play caller, like there is in Pittsburgh with Arthur Smith, we pay a little closer attention, maybe just a little bit closer attention. Jalen Warren is talking about how much he is looking forward to being a pass catching back pass catching opportunities. And if it is Russell Wilson, see, I don't like doing this, right? I don't want to even picture the Steelers offense with Russell Wilson. Don't do that to me. But if I do, if I do, who was Russell Wilson targeting a lot last year with Denver? Samaj P. Ryan. <laughs> right. Or Javante Williams or whoever. Well, didn't uh, Samaj had what, 50 catches? Right. Yeah. So it's right. like, yeah. He it's... wasn't even close to a full time player. He wasn't right. on the field as much as Jalen Warren's going to be on the field this year. Mm-hmm. Yep. So excite. I mean, and, and then if Justin Fields is the quarterback, well, then Warren profits by. 11 on 11 football and defenses that have to protect against field speed. So there's more big plays there for Jalen Warren that way. And let's not forget that Jalen Warren is still on the upslope of his career arc, undrafted free agent, uh, who's probably going to be the lead back for this team this year and maybe for a while. You know, Steelers have had some great late round undrafted gems over the years. Barry Foster had that one year. Uh, Willie Parker, football guys cover boy. Jalen Warren could be part of that conversation very quickly. Very, very quickly. Now, Bloom, you're going to have to convince me on this one, brother, because Keon Coleman is a player I love. Yeah. I'm in love with him at the Combine, actually. Great personality. His film is outstanding. I had the Bills mocked with him, getting him in the first round. And I'm going to count that, Bloom. Yeah. Humble brag. 13 picks correct team and player in my my only mock draft, because I talked to GMs, um, and I had Keon Coleman going to the Bills in the first round. I'm still going to count that one. Yeah. So it's still yeah, 13. So. If not, my man Charlie so. Campbell had 12, so he's right on my tail. But either way, mock drafts are tough. Keon Coleman yeah. is tough. And uh, it's tough for me to say this, but he could be an avoid. Yeah. Well, look, he's an avoid because I think there's layers to this. One is we have to look at the Joe Brady Buffalo Bills offense. Okay. The Joe Brady Buffalo Bills offense is a run heavy offense. It's a conservative offense. They're taking the ball out of Josh's hand. Exactly. And if we look at the Joe Brady offense on a game by game basis last year, there was no consistent target in the passing game. Maybe Dalton Kincaid. And that's the thing. If there is going to be somebody you can count on every week in this passing game, it is going to be Dalton Kincaid. Okay. Keon Coleman's only going like two rounds after Kincaid and Keon Coleman is going ahead multiple rounds ahead of Curtis Samuel and ahead of Khalil Shakir. Okay. Uh, Keon Coleman's gonna have to blow them off the field in training camp and preseason to justify that because these are guys are useful players. Curtis Samuel, who again, had one of his best years of his career with Joe Brady in Carolina. All right. And then Khalil Shakir, who's an ascendant player. And if you're looking for the player that actually has the coach speak buzz, I think it's Khalil Shakir. See, I would guess what we're going to see here is Shakir and Samuel and Coleman trading off big weeks. If Joe Brady is a good game planner, you know, sometimes the big slot option like Coleman's going to be the guy. Sometimes Curtis Samuel and his speed and his versatility, you can use him to cross up defenses. Sometimes it's going to be Khalil Shakir and his toughness and his run after catch ability. Khalil Shakir, excellent after the catch. So I just don't think you're going to see somebody really get consistent enough to leave in your lineup. The other thing is, if you do want to go and dip into the rookie wide receivers going around the sixth or seventh round, Keon Coleman's not the only option. One of the options is Roma Dunze, and Roma Dunze could hit because he's just a badass. Mm -hmm. I mean, Roma Dunze, no disrespect to Keon Coleman. Roma Dunze is light years ahead of Keon Coleman in terms of ability to make an instant impact in the NFL. Okay. But the guy is Lad McConkey. That's if you want to take a rookie wide receiver with hopes that he comes out of the gate right away as the number one wide receiver for a good quarterback. That's the guy. We're already hearing the reports out of OTAs that that's Justin Herbert's favorite target. This seems pretty elementary to me. So it's avoid Keon Coleman for reasons we talked about, but you rearrange the letters and it spells out take Lad McConkey. Yes, take Lad McConkey because he is amazing. Brock Bowers is amazing as well. He's going to have a lot of hype around him. And at tight end, fantasy GMs are desperate 
So even when you're desperate, taking the best slot receiver playing tight end named Brock Bowers is a player to avoid? Yeah, I just don't see it, Cease. I mean, look, again, just like we talked about with C.J. Stroud, it's not impossible. It's possible that Brock Bowers is going to be a really good pick around pick 100 or so right now because he's Brock Bowers. Because sure. speaking of Vlad McConkey, uh, A.D. Mitchell, you know, uh, or Jermaine Burton, I remember who it was. Look, he, earlier in Brock Bowers' career at Georgia, he was a more compelling target than some guys that got drafted pretty highly, okay? And he might just be that good. He might just be that good that once he's out there, Whatever the Raiders' plans were, they tear them up and they say, this pass offense runs through Brock Bowers right away. Right away. Yeah, but, hey, Devontae Adams is still there, right? Uh, Jacoby Myers is still there. Oh, what does Antonio Pierce want to do with this? Run, 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 run. Zamir White, Zamir White, more Zamir White, and more Zamir White and more Zamir White. Also, you've got, whether it's Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew, not exactly a quarterback that's conducive to getting a player to hit their ceiling in the passing game. So it's really difficult, Cease, for me to picture Brock Bowers being so good that Devontae Adams is not an equal option in the passing game in right. an offense that's not going to lean on the passing game with the quarterback that's not going to maximize the passing game. Yeah, it all adds up. And so we'll be continuing to watch in the precinct. Of course, it's the audible Cecil Lammy, Sigmund Bloom. Make sure to like and comment on this video. Help us out in those YouTube overlords as we wrap up today's program. Another Broncos show segment. And if you watched our Deep Sleeper show, then you know at Mandatory Minicamp, the number one running back for the Broncos looks like Jaleel McLaughlin with Javante Williams getting third team reps, which is odd. But Javante, love him, had him above Najee Harris when they came out of college, Bloom. He's my number one running back, but he doesn't look the same. Yeah. He shredded his knee two years ago, came back in 10 months, basically, played all of last year, averaged, what, two yards a carry? I think it was three. 3.4 yards a carry. He still doesn't look like the same Javante. And maybe that's what where my head is at. Right. Is that I've seen the young spry Javante. The Javante I see now lacks the suddenness, lacks the burst. Right. And I see Julio McLaughlin play and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And then Audric Estime, who will be ready for training camp, he looked really good before he had a little bit of a knee thing little knee scope thing, whatever. Right. But like, okay, is it going to be Jaleel and Estime and Javante's with another team? Like, we don't yet know as of time is recording. And when you're watching this, we're on the verge of training camp. So yeah, Javante Williams, squarely on the bubble. Cease, I think you nailed it at the beginning when you said, folks are still holding on to some idea that he was drafted to be the lead back for this team and he has the metrics of that yards after contact or whatever to be the guy in this backfield, that's over. The right. book is written and closed. There's no more chapters in that book. When Sean Payton says, we're going to have competition at running back, five guys in this competition, right, Cease? Mm -hmm. Blake Watson, let's not forget him. Yep. There are five guys. He's telling us, Javante Williams doesn't have this incumbent momentum, inertia anymore. He's not the incumbent. He's not really going to be with the team next year. Next year, maybe earlier. The point being that they're showing you that he's not guaranteed anything in this backfield. And as you point out, Cease, if you watch him last year, he probably shouldn't be. That's not too harsh. And we're not getting any reports from you or other people at training camp. I'm sorry, at OTAs and uh, saying, oh, he looks like he got it back. He looks like the no, nobody's saying that. Nobody's talking about Javante Williams. So he's still, it's like a ghost ship. He's still going early-ish. When I say early-ish, what I mean is he's the first Denver Broncos running back off the board. And he's going in the same range of the draft as some players with some interesting profiles that could hit. I don't see Javante Williams hitting. See, all four of the other running backs going into training camp could all get hurt. 
And I still don't think Javante Williams will hit. I think they would just bring in other guys that will share the backfield with him and begrudgingly have him lead the backfield. The fantasy football community hasn't caught up yet, but if you're listening to us right now, you can make sure that you avoid Javante Williams. You're catching up during the non-playing season, and hey, you're getting ready for your fantasy drafts. That's what footballguys.com is for. And then some... First, we have our free daily newsletter every single day right to your inbox, hot and fresh. It's Football Guys free daily newsletter. Bob Harris, Cecil Lammy, third person, Sigmund Bloom, and Joe Bryant. We're all bringing you the latest news right to you every single day. Uh, you have a life. We don't. <laughs> so make sure to check out our Football Guys free daily newsletter at footballguys.com. You want to support the show? Please subscribe to footballguys.com. It's a great price, and we appreciate you very much for doing just that. He's Sigmund Bloom. You follow him on Twitter, X at Sigmund Bloom. I'm at Cecil Amy saying the show's at the Audible. Stay tuned, and would you please stay frosty? <laughs>